right, school is in session. I'm gonna have to give you a little bit of a lesson here because if I don't, I'm gonna get a bunch of comments about it, which, hey, you should be giving me comments anyway because they help that YouTube algorithm. And if you really like me, please hit that like button and subscribe because we got a lot more content coming. But this is something that people still do not understand and it's very important to today's video. This is Adventure Force. It is Walmart's brand name for most of their toys that aren't like Lego or Hot Wheels and stuff like that. And in it, you will find a ton of different kinds of toys from a bunch of different companies. But when it comes to foam dart blasters, Zuru, Busby, and Primetime Toys all release blasters which are under the Adventure Force line. So when I say Adventure Force in the title or thumbnail, but I say something about Busby in the actual video, that's because Busby is the company that made it and it's being sold at Walmart under the Adventure Force line. Adventure Force does not make the Nexus Pro. Primetime Toys, Dart Zone, they are the ones who make the Nexus Pro. In today's video, we're gonna be taking a look at another Busby Blaster, and I swear to Chrome, this one better be good because the Thunder Shot was one of the worst blasters I've ever gotten my grubby little Nerf beaters on. For 25 bucks, you get quite a lot of blaster here. This one actually feels like it might be a good deal, if it works. In the business, we call this foreshadowing. Also, hi, I'm editing Walcom, and while I'm here, I might as well apologize in advance because I'm about to get really obnoxiously sweaty. It was like 97 degrees heat wave in Washington. I mean, in the land of Christmas trees, that's a little bit hot, and I couldn't have any AC or fans running because I'm filming, so, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I mean, unless you like this kind of thing. I, I, yeah, let's just get back to the video before this gets too weird. It's an auto advanced 48 capacity dart belt blaster that really feels like it should have been a dart shotgun, but apparently, according to the box, it is not. Quad shell belt, each shell holds full darts. 100 pieces, it comes with 98 darts. It's got a belt cover and it shows you load the chains, everything like that. You pump the blaster to load it, you pull the trigger to fire. So it does in fact have a trigger and it boasts up to a distance of 90 feet, claiming the ultimate in belt blasting. Well, I picked this up at my local Walmart and I'm really hoping that the Tetra shot astounds me because while the color scheme may not be the most attractive thing ever and maybe all the greebling decal and stuff on it may not be to your aesthetic, Sure looks cool as a silhouette, and I like the idea of the belt-fed quad dart thing. So we're just gonna open this up and do the all-important on-camera Busby patented can a human hand actually fit this grip? Oh my god. It looks like a normal grip. It it almost looks like a like a human hand. They made a pump grip and a main grip that doesn't suck. They made a pump grip and a main grip that doesn't suck. Busby, you did it. This isn't even like the sloped back weird grip that's on the Sentinel that just happened to work. This, this is a grip. This is a pump grip. I'm a man with I would say medium hands that most of you would say small, and I think this is comfortable. Busby, you did it. You get one gold star out of three for actually making your blaster usable for human hands. Now seriously, there's a bit of grip right there, so you have slightly larger hands. You should still be able to feel pretty comfortable. The plastic quality is Busby. It feels really thin, really cheap, really plastic. Uh, hopefully it works fine. Ooh, let's see what the Prime is like. I should be able to... It's pretty light. It's got a nice thump to it. Let's get the shell chain out. So this is a chain. Uh, I really wish this was for a shotgun. And I'm super curious to see what the mechanism is like because with this chain shell thingy, you would expect that it would shoot all four, but then how does it know to go to the next chain? I have absolutely no idea. Does it just do one, two, three, four, and automatically index to the next chain no matter what after every four shots? How would it know? I have no clue. That's gonna be interesting to find out. I actually don't even know why these are so awful. I have to assume it's the head design, but if you weren't paying attention to every video I've done that features these darts, 
They're just awful. They're super inaccurate. They are just as bad, if not potentially worse, <sighs> than the Elite Dart. And uh, there is a lot of glue. Yeah. Uh, maybe that's why they give you so many, because they know a lot of them won't work. That is super, super disappointing. All right, all the way to the back. I only loaded three of the shells. The chain is obviously meant to go together. Put that chain in there. Put that down. All right. Stand back a little bit. It didn't even make it on the wall. All right, and it does not have slam fire. Good enough. So, it does just index the chain every four shots, no matter where you are, as you can see with the chain right here. And the performance, once again, is horrible. I don't know what's going on. This one's supposed to hit harder than my thunder shot did. I picked this up, brand new from Walmart, opened it up, and the dart doesn't even reach the wall, which is maybe 25 feet away. That is not good, Busby. Like, that is worse than my huge, sweaty face right now. You might need to forgive me for this one. It's one of those scenarios where I'm kind of glad that I do both range footage and chronograph readings at the same time, because, uh, yeah, this thing's virtually impossible to chronograph because the darts are all coming out at different parts of the barrel, and I don't know, it's just really weird. You think just centering the barrel on the thing would work, but it sure don't. Not that it really matters, because what chronograph readings we do good are like mid-50s, low-30s. Those are usually the ones that hit the side of it, but you can claim about 50 FPS from this thing, which is not ever going to hit that magical 90-foot range claim that's on the back of the box. This is incredibly frustrating for a blaster like this, and really says the same thing. I, I actually don't even know what was wrong with my original Thunder shot that I did a video on, but this is having the same exact problem. And no, it isn't the darts. If I swap the darts out with something else, it just gets less power because the darts are heavier and it's, it's awful. It's absolutely horrible. I don't know what the problem with Busby is, but this is... This is not a good look for them at all. I, I basically can't do anything with this blaster, let alone even chronograph it. Gotta tell ya, I am not looking forward to this one at all. This is not a good blaster, but let's see what happens. Ah, with the Tetra Strike. Holy crap. Hey! That one caught the wind a little bit. That one almost didn't even go 25 feet. I'm trying to angle it now. And I still... About 30 feet. Oh, 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 see that one right there. Wow, we went from the farthest shot we've gotten to the closest shot we've gotten. Uh, this is, uh, this is awful. This is, I don't know what, I don't know what Busby's doing anymore. This is, this is really bad. I'm not going to sit here and pretend that this isn't a lemon, that this is just one that probably has some kind of defect in it for the manufacturing process that makes it not work the way it's supposed to. My problem is actually twofold. One, this is the third blaster I've seen from Busby that has this problem where it says one thing on the box and I get something that's woefully underpowered, like circa 2004 underpowered Busby which is incredibly disappointing. Now, as a reviewer, I could certainly just take it back to the store when I found out it doesn't work and get another one, but quite honestly, it's not worth my time, and it's better for you to be aware and be prepared that if you buy one of these products, you may have to return it to get the one that works in the way that it's supposed to. And I kind of wish I would have gotten one that worked in the way it's supposed to because this thing's not good. But let's assume that it works flawlessly. Let's get on to my second gripe. While it does do something new and innovative, usually Busby blasters, in my opinion, are 
actually more tuned for kids. This is so much more complicated and so much more prone to being lost and abused and broken than like an Adventure Force Villainator, which would be right on the shelf next to this thing, that I wouldn't recommend this kind of blaster for a kid. Now, if they really like the idea of what they see, I don't blame them. This is cool. This is innovative. This is unique. I kind of like it. Does it work all that well? Yeah, kinda. I mean, it does index the chain like every four shots, pretty much no matter what, which can be really annoying if you're actually using the thing. But if I had $100 to spend, or if I wanted to wait until these things went on clearance, or maybe Busby will sell these things separately, I would love to get my hands on like a hundred of these and have a big old box and make this big, massive, rotating chain fed thing. Because then you could just fire pretty much forever, which is something that a villainator wanted to do. And as the chain gets too long feeding from the box, it's really easy to just break it apart. Super easy. In fact, it's so easy I would worry about it doing that in just general play anyway which uh, really defeats any of the recommendations I could possibly give this blaster. Is it good for kids? It's a decent value, but it's probably not going to work. And even if it did, stuff's going to get broken, stuff's going to get lost, and it's a little too much for what it's trying to do. Now, for somebody like me or an HVZ star or something like that, there is potential. And honestly, if you put it on a tripod, had a big old box, and you just kind of sat there and fired off shots until it literally broke or you somehow magically ran out of ammo out of your 100 chains of 400 rounds of ammo or whatever. Yeah, I can see somebody wanting to do that. And for that, I could give this a recommendation. That's about the only recommendation I can give it. And honestly, that's not a very tall recommendation because who knows how well this thing would actually work in such a scenario. I just see the chain and I see potential. There's not a lot of chain fed blasters anymore. And I do think they have a purpose in this hobby. So. I don't know what the heck's your problem is, Busby. I honestly don't know what's wrong with you because this can't keep going on. I didn't review any of your products last year because I had problems with every single one of them and it got so tiring the day I was filming Busby Review Day that I literally scrapped all the footage. I had two Battle Blazers, both of which neither of them would actually index the chain into the proper position to fire the dart, and I had a Rebel Mech that just didn't work. I was literally shooting firing footage and it turned off and never turned back on. Probably a wire got loose or something. That's not something I want to deal with with a $25 blaster, so... This isn't looking good. This is not good at all. Go back. This is, this is awful. I applaud you for trying to do something new, but I condemn you for not pulling it off in a workable way. That's all I got for you. I'm Walcom7. Thank you very much for watching this video. Chances are, if you got all the way to the end, you'd like what I do. So please hit that like button. Consider subscribing because I got a lot more content coming your way in the form of hopefully things that work better than this. And who knows? Maybe I'll mod this because I kind of like the idea of it. But thank you very much for watching this video. And of course, I hope to see you in an entirely different one. It does look pretty visually menacing like that. You gotta